Hello everyone, welcome again to another Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom video. In this video, we're going to be discussing the most unrealistic parts of the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. Starting off with the scene with the Carnotaurus going after Owen and the others while the volcano was erupting. We've seen how many dinosaurs have been fleeing from out of the forest, so why would the Carnotaurus be hurting for food? And of all moments, why would it see fit to go after Owen and not the bigger wounded fallen dinosaurs that got hit by fallen rocks? Well, it's very likely that there would be other carnivores in the area, so pickings could be slim. If you look closely at the scene where the Carnotaurus is stalking them, they don't seem to be in immediate danger. It is only after Rexy attacks the Carnotaurus that we see a piece of the volcano fall away to create the avalanche of ash and gas, as you can see here. Not immediate danger, immediate danger. Many carnivores are also opportunists, and if there's an easy picking at the time that they're able to get it, they're going to take advantage of it because they don't know when the next meal will come. I think it's also safe to say that many of the dinosaurs that we see in the trailer and that are alive are the ones that were naturally selected and deemed fit enough to survive and evade predators. Just because there are a lot of herbivores around or dinosaurs in general, as seen in the trailer, doesn't necessarily mean that they can just easily be picked off by the carnivores. This also pertains to Rexy doing the same thing. Why would Rexy see fit to do this at the very time all this is happening, unless she's repaying Owen and Claire for having saved her somehow. It would be poetic, and the fans would love it believing that Rexy did this as a showmanship of loyalty. But the truth probably is that she went after the Carnotaurus for the same reason the Carnotaurus went after the humans. She's taking advantage of an opportunity. The next point is Rexy roaring after taking down the Carnotaurus. This was honestly done for fan service, if anything else, and that's what a lot of people thought, but also to showcase the power of the Rex. Of course, her stopping the roar could be her accepting her fate and going out with a bang. Or more likely, it could be a show of intimidation and power over the smaller predator who was still alive in this scene. Or more realistically, to intimidate other predators in the near vicinity from either staying in her territory or stealing her kill. Rexy roaring in her infamous scenes are actually realistic circumstances, and we don't have to look very far to explain it. Maybe its portrayal in the movies for the Jurassic Park are not realistic, but the act of roaring itself or making a noise itself after making a kill or taking down an opponent is realistic. We only have to look at the cousins of dinosaurs today, birds and crocodilians. Birds are quite vocal and will make a wide range of noises based on their actions on their environment. A lot of them will vocalize to warn others or their children to be quiet when predators are around. Alligators will make noises so loud that it can be heard from well over 100 yards away. Alligators also make aggressive territorial noises to ward off potential predators. Predators in general will roar within their territory to let other predators know that they are around and to stay away. Now, this will blow your socks off, but remember the scene from Jurassic Park 1 where it seemed as though Rexy was saving the humans from raptors? It was such a touching and epic moment that they saw fit to recreate it in the upcoming Jurassic Park movie. Well, as much as we love Rexy, she doesn't care anything about the humans. She just happened to be there at the right time when the raptors were just about to attack. She was being territorial, which is why she roared after killing them. The Spinosaurus also roared after killing the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 3. So it's highly likely that predators make these noises after subduing their competition or prey to let other predators of either the same species or not do not come near them or their territory or the same fate will befall them. So although some people would think it very cheesy that Rexy roared after committing this act, it's actually very probable that she would have done it in reality. And just a note here, do you re recognize the scene with the Gallimimuses? Look at how filled out and well-fed Rexy looks as opposed to this picture. You can see the stark difference between Rexy when she was healthy and in her prime and when she is skinny and old. She literally looks like an old hag. The next supposed unrealistic part of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is the Mosasaurus surviving. This 50-foot and 15-ton sea creature miraculously survived somehow. How? How did it eat? It is possible that some dinosaurs could have come to the water to drink, upon which the Mosasaurus would have taken its cue to ambush them. 
But how often would it actually happen? How often would it have gotten an opportunity to do that? We saw many fans asking these questions and they perceived it to be a little ridiculous, but in actuality, it isn't. The Mosasauruses um, are not really dinosaurs and are said to be more closely related to the lizards of today. So it is fair to assess that they would have many of the same attributes that a lot of species of lizards would have. One thing to note, there are many different species of Mosasaurus, and they don't just live in salt water. They can also live in fresh water. I'm not certain whether or not the Mosasaurus paddock in Jurassic World was filled up with fresh water or salt water. If it was mentioned, I didn't catch it. But it is very possible that the Mosasaurus would survive three years if its paddock was freshwater. Reason being, animals would find it as a worthy water source, which would more than supply the Mosasaurus with the occasional big meal. Even so, the chances of it catching its prey on the regular for three years is highly unlikely. Many dinosaurs probably would come to this water source, but I'm sure a lot of them would also become wise that there was a predator lurking nearby. This means that they would take precautions drinking from it after a while. But if we look at another characteristic that the Mosasaurus has when we take into account that it is related to species of lizards today as well as crocodiles, it is very believable that the Mosasaurus survived three years. Easily believable. The first thing to note is the Mosasaurus's size. Large, slow-moving animals have slower metabolisms and don't need to eat as much as smaller, fast-moving animals that exert more energy. Second thing to note is that if we take a closer look at the Mosasaurus's cousin, the crocodile, we see that crocodiles preserve their energy by lying in wait for their prey. You've probably seen alligators and crocodiles while they're not doing anything and were amazed at how still they can be, almost as though they were a part of the Earth itself. As ectothermic creatures or cold-blooded creatures, they don't need a high metabolism since they get their body heat from their environment, which is why you'll see them basking on the rocks to soak up the sun. It is said that their metabolism is so efficient that they will use up every molecule of anything they eat. Crocodiles regularly go months without eating, but can survive up to three years without any food. Three years. After a year without food, they go into a sort of hyperhibernation in which their bodies will slow down and they will live off their fat and muscle. Being that <laughs> the Mosasaurus is a cousin of the crocodile, it is not far off to imagine that the Mosasaurus could live off only a few meals during the three-year period. When you also consider that it probably catches big prey every once in a while, such as the Indominus Rex, it would be able to live off of that for a very long time. So even though it initially seems very unlikely, it is very highly probable and realistic for the Mosasaurus to have survived this long, even without any morsel of food. You have to also remember that it was being fed regularly when the park was up and running so that people could see it put on a show of eating. It is fair to say that this animal would have had way more than enough fat reserves and energy to survive for three years without any more food. Well, those are the main explanations for the supposedly unrealistic scenes in the Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom trailer. Do you guys disagree with us? What other events or even scenes in the Jurassic Park series do you feel is highly unrealistic? Comment below. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.